Before I begin my presentation tonight, I've put something special together. This is something we do on my show every week. We pitch in to help the FCC keep our public airwaves squeaky clean by bleeping and blurring things, whether they need it or not. And with that said, please enjoy a special White House Correspondents Association dinner version of This Week in Unnecessary Censorship. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you uh, for coming to the White House for your daily f***ing. I've told leaders of both parties that they must come up with a fair compromise in the next few days that can pass both houses of Congress. And a c*** that I can s President Obama says it's ass in time of the Gulf Coast. Trying to find bipartisan health care reform on Capitol Hill is sort of like children trying to f*** unicorns. Uh, I have with homosexuals since 1968. I'm a regular guy with a big I like being able to f people who provide services to me. Harry Reid just wants to put his finger at his and sing. Are you not getting enough you and the administration? Look, these are gigantic packages. I understand what pork barrel politics is all about. I s your you s mine. That was a great interview. Thank you very much. I right. enjoyed being here. Thanks, guys. Right, even though you touched his <laughs> She's not the only person that I have I have a lot of people. The only thing about this particular one is, yes, she happened to be female. I promise you, the president has a big dick. <laughs> I promise you. The Irish prime minister, he was crazy. He was introducing the president. They had a wonderful time. Hey, we campaigned the whole day. Whenever I saw my staff, I said, are you up? They said, I'm up, boss. You ready to go? I said, I'm ready to go. But here's the thing, Ohio. After about a minute or two, I'm starting to feel kind of f***ed up. And now, I'd like to introduce a comedian who I think will be a particular hit with the journalists in this room. Jimmy Kimmel is known in the world of comedy, not only for his sense of humor, but for his work ethic and his tenacity. And for those of us familiar with the ups and downs of the media business, what's not to like about a guy who's been fired from four radio stations? <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, it's my pleasure to introduce Jimmy Kimmel, host of ABC's Jimmy Kimmel Live. Well, thank you. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, distinguished guests, Mr. President, salam. <laughs> it's wonderful to be here. Uh, they told me this would be a very high-profile event with some of the most powerful people in the world. They did not tell me I'd be looking directly into Sofia Vergara's cleavage. <laughs> I saw you texting. <laughs> Sofia is from Colombia. This is what women look like in Colombia. What do you expect the Secret Service to do? Mr. President, I know you won't be able to laugh at any of my jokes about the Secret Service, so um, cover your ears if that's physically possible. <laughs> I do have a lot of jokes about the Secret Service. You know, I told them for $800 I wouldn't tell them, but they only offered 30 so... I am happy to see that Congress is taking this very seriously. David Vitter even went so far as to fly down to Columbia to investigate this personally. I'll tell you what though, I know the administration's been cracking down, but if this had happened on President Clinton's watch, you can damn well bet those Secret Service agents would have been disciplined with a very serious high five. <laughs> Palms would be beat red. Quick announcement, um, if anyone has tickets to the GSA after party, the plane is leaving for the Four Seasons in Dubai at midnight on the dot. <laughs> Don't be late or you'll miss out on your complimentary white tiger cub. <laughs> I want to thank the uh, Washington Hilton for hosting us tonight. You know, President Obama wanted to move the dinner to the Kennedy Center this year, but the Republicans wanted to keep it here at the Hilton, so they compromised and here we are at the Hilton. <laughs> I am, um, 
I'm staying at the hotel, and uh, I'll be honest, it isn't great. Uh, I had to change rooms last night because there was a huge leak in the room above me. Uh, I guess uh, Peter Orzag left his mouth on. <laughs> and he told me you guys would like that one. He told me a lot of stuff. <laughs> but it's an honor to be here. You know, he told me when I was a kid that I would be sitting on the same dais with President Barack Obama. I, I would have said, the president's name is Barack Obama? <laughs> Mr. President, you remember, you remember when the country rallied around you in hopes of a better tomorrow? That was hilarious. <laughs> that was your best one yet. But honestly, it, it, it's a thrill for me to be here with the president, a man who has, I think, done his best to guide us through some very difficult times and paid a heavy price for it. You know, there's a term for guys like President Obama. Um, probably not two terms, but... There is. Even some of your fellow Democrats think you're a pushover, Mr. President. They would like to see you stick to your guns. And if you don't have any guns, they would like to see you ask Eric Holder to get some for you. <laughs> Jake Tapper wrote that. <laughs> it's kind of hard to be funny with the uh, President of the United States sitting right next to you, looking at you, and yet somehow, day in and day out, Joe Biden manages to do it. <laughs> I wish he was here. I, I wish he was here so he could sit behind me and fake clap dur like he does during the State of the Union address. Are you enjoying this? Is this fun for you? This is the first meal he's had in months. They say diplomacy is a matter of carrots and sticks, and since Mrs. Obama got to the White House, so is dinner. You're very skinny. She doesn't let you eat. I felt weird about eating dessert. I left it untouched. I've never done that before. You know, the real reason people thought you were from Kenya had nothing to do with your birth certificate. It's because you lost so much weight, we thought you were the guy who won the Boston Marathon. This is how you know this country's in bad shape. Our president is starving. North Korea is sending him food aid. I had the opportunity to sit next to the First Lady tonight. She's very, very nice, and uh, no matter what side of the fence you're on, you have to admit, she's done a lot of good work. She just wants us to be healthy, really, is all. Mrs. Obama, I thank you for that. Look, it's Chris Christie, get him. You know, they say that inside every American governor is a president struggling to get out. In Chris Christie's case, it's the only one where you can still hear him screaming. <laughs> governor Christie, I think you might be misunderstanding New Jersey's slogan. It's not the Olive Garden state. <laughs> but the, um, the truth is, the First Lady is right. Americans are in terrible shape. You can even tell how out of shape we are by the way we protest. We used to march, now we occupy. <laughs> I want to say a quick congratulations to the Occupy protesters. Uh, it took months and months of patchouli oil and hacky sack, but finally, Wall Street isn't greedy anymore. Congratulations. <laughs> White House Press Secretary Jay Carney is with us. Hello, Jay. Um, Jay is, as you know, not only his press secretary, he, you also know him as the white guy from every Lens Crafters commercial. <laughs> One of Jay's jobs is to keep track of all the Hillary Rosens. <laughs> For those of you who aren't familiar with this story, Kim, Lindsay, etc. cetera. <laughs> um, Hillary Rosen is the woman who said Ann Romney never worked a day in her life, even though Mrs. Romney raised five kids. And of course, the administration tried to distance itself from those comments. They said she's not an advisor to the Obama campaign even though, as we later found out, her name appeared on the White House visitor log 35 times. So when reporters asked Jay why her name showed up 35 times, this is where it gets hilarious. He said he wasn't sure it was the same Hillary Rosen. He said, I personally know three Hillary Rosens. <laughs> you personally know three Hillary Rosens? Where did all these Hillary Rosens come from? Did you pick them in the Hillary Rosen garden? <laughs> I bet you $10,000 you don't know three Hillary Rosens, but I'm not running for president, so. Three Hillarys. 
That sounds like President Clinton's worst nightmare. <laughs> hey, uh, is that slut Rush Limbaugh here? People are still upset with the rush for comments he made about Sandra Fluke, but you know what? There's a reason Mr. Limbaugh said what he said, and that reason is Percocet. <laughs> and by the way, just to clear things up for the extreme right-wingers, here's the difference between Bill Maher and Rush Limbaugh. The people who watch Bill Maher know he's an asshole. <laughs> this is um, my first time here. Every news organization, I guess, has its own table. Scripps is here, thank God, just in case the spelling breaks out. We have that covered. We have numerous members of the print media in attendance, which reminds me of a riddle. What's black and white and red all over? Nothing anymore. <laughs> really? The Christie jokes are okay, but no? Yeah. Where are the CNN tables? Are the CNN tables real tables or virtual tables? There you are. Every election year, CNN comes up with new and increasingly amazing technology. They have the magic wall this year. They had the hologram four years ago. And yet, with all their technical wizardry, they still haven't figured out a way to make James Carville look less like a hairless, boiled cat. <laughs> Quite a few cable news anchors wrote books this year. Chris Matthews of MSNBC wrote a biography of JFK, it's 427 pages long. Poor Rick Santorum was throwing up all night. <laughs> Bill O'Reilly wrote a controversial book about another great president called Killing Lincoln. I actually have my own theory about Lincoln's death. I think John Wilkes Booth was innocent. I don't even think it was an assassination. I believe that Abraham Lincoln had a vision about what the Republican Party would become in 150 years, <laughs> and he shot himself. <laughs> Is the Fox table laughing, or, or did Rupert Murdoch hack into all my jokes already? <laughs> Some people think Rupert Murdoch was intentionally trying to appear to be confused when he testified in front of the British government, but I don't know. The man is 81 years old. I think you have to know how to use a cell phone before you can figure out how to hack into one. <laughs> Rupert Murdoch paid $580 million for MySpace. Clearly, he knows nothing about technology. <laughs> Fox News is the grumpy old man of cable. Loud, stubborn, a little bit out of touch with reality, just had a mole removed. <laughs> is the Fox Mole here, by the way? I'd like to take a moment to salute the Fox Mole. Were it not for his brave sacrifice, the world may never have known that the bathrooms at Fox were overdue for renovation. <laughs> Leaking two videos and getting caught right away doesn't make you a mole, it makes you a freckle. As a result of all the success Fox News has had, MSNBC has uh, moved a bit to the left of Hugo Chavez lately. <laughs> MSNBC has a very big star now in Rachel Maddow. Rachel hosts her own show. She's a best-selling author. And yet somehow she still manages to find time to cut her own hair. <laughs> the Rachel was a very different hairstyle when Jennifer Aniston had it. Rachel Maddow also wrote a book. In it, she argues that the unchecked expansion of executive power since Vietnam has resulted in a country that is perpetually at war, which comes at disastrous cost, not only financially, but to the very ideals on which the United States was founded. Women, nag, 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 you know? <laughs> there are a lot of very big celebrities here with us tonight. Uggy is here. Uh, Uggy's the dog from the movie The Artist. Uggy is amazing. He, um, he can roll over on command. He's a Democrat. Uggy, I have some advice. If Mitt Romney ever invites you to go for a ride, call Shotgun. <laughs> and if the president tries to butter you, run. <laughs> Last week we learned that the president's two favorite steaks are ribeye and seeing eye. <laughs> you know you don't have to reveal everything in an autobiography, right? I mean, you can leave some things out. When you go to a, a dog park, is, is it the same as when we look at a tank full of lobsters? <laughs> The president was very candid uh, in an interview with The Atlantic a couple of weeks ago when he called Kanye West a jackass. Which, um, no offense, sir, but I think you got the wrong West. I think you meant Allen. Do all Wests look the same to you? George Clooney is here tonight. Tomorrow he's set to appear before Allen West in the House on American Activities Committee. George is hosting a fundraiser event for the Obama campaign 
For $3, you can enter a raffle, and the winner gets to have dinner with the president at George Clooney's house. And I, I for one, have always dreamed of eating a Hot Pocket with the president and Batman. <laughs> and now I can do it for only three bucks. And if you don't win the raffle, remember, you can still win dinner with George himself if you are a six foot one blonde with a perfect body. <laughs> Sully Sullenberger, where is Sully Sullenberger? I met him outside the... Uh... Sully, would you do a, us a favor? Would you mind driving Lindsay Lohan home? <laughs> Make sure you don't run into a goose, especially a gray goose. <laughs> George Stephanopoulos is here. Good morning, America. Just beat the Today Show for the first time in 16 years. And George is riding well, high maybe isn't the word, but say, let's say he's very pleased. 16 years is a long time. 16 years ago, there was no Facebook, there was no Google, and a tweet was something Barbara Walters gave her dog. <laughs> this, um, this is really incredible. I mean, what a collection of people. Here in one room, we have members of the media, politicians, corporate executives, advertisers, lobbyists, and celebrities. Everything that is wrong with America is here in this room tonight. <laughs> Unfortunately, the Speaker of the House, John Boehner, isn't. Apparently, yours aren't the only dinner invitations he declines, Mrs. Obama. Don't take it personally, though. He's probably just afraid someone will ask him to pass the salt and he won't have the votes. <laughs> Eric uh, Cantor couldn't be here tonight. He's at the gym working out his gavel arm. This Boehner-Cantor feud fascinates me. As most of you know, it started during the debt ceiling negotiations when they couldn't agree on the, the wording of the ransom note. And it went downhill from there. Interesting fact about Speaker Boehner, the reason he smokes so many cigarettes is his tears keep putting them out. <laughs> Minority Leader Nancy Pelosi isn't here tonight either, but her, uh, her lipstick is. It's on my glass, I think, from last year. Nancy Pelosi believes in lipstick the same way she believes in government. Too much is never enough. Jake Tapper also wrote that one. Uh, I've been, I have to say, I've been having a lot of fun here in Washington. It's such a great city with all the, the history and monuments. I was at the Lincoln Memorial last night. Just, I was standing there in awe, thinking, wow, back in the 60s, on this very spot, Forrest Gump reunited with Jenny. <laughs> the people are interesting, too. You know, it's fun to have conversations with people who are so passionate about politics. I talked to a guy who is a huge supporter of Obamacare, and, and a guy who says it's a disaster that should be killed immediately. And it was interesting because I'd never met Mitt Romney before. <laughs> Mitt Romney is um, the inevitable Republican candidate for president. And he has an amazing story. You know, they picked him out of a Land's End catalog. That's how he was discovered. Some people say Mitt Romney won't be elected president because he's Mormon, and I think that's ignorant. I mean, this country is more open-minded than that. We elected an African-American president. We would absolutely elect a Mormon president, just not Mitt Romney. <laughs> Stevie Wonder just said, we elected an African-American president? <laughs> we heard uh, Eric Fernstrom compare Romney's campaign to an Etch-a-Sketch, and I don't know, when I think Mitt Romney, I don't think Etch-a-Sketch, I think Twister. One foot on red, the other on blue, and both hands on green. <laughs> Mitt has trouble connecting with regular people. You can't have a beer with him because he doesn't drink. You can't have a cup of coffee with him because he can't have caffeine. You can't even play Monopoly with him because he keeps trying to put the dog on the car. <laughs> but if you're a Republican, you know, there isn't much of a choice I get. Rick Santorum is out. I guess it just wasn't Rick's year. Rick's year is 1954. <laughs> You know, it's one thing to oppose gay marriage, it's another altogether to do it in a sweater vest. <laughs> but, um, in the end, Rick Santorum may not have won the nomination, but he succeeded in getting his message out, not just to Americans, but to people all aflat the world. <laughs> Ron Paul is uh, still in there, he's still sticking with it. To me, Ron Paul looks like the guy who gets unhooded at the end of every Scooby-Doo episode. <laughs> it's great to see the Gingriches here tonight because I guess that means the check cleared. <laughs> Newt, I have a question. How can you be against gay marriage when you yourself are the son of two gay parents, the Michelin Man and the Stay Puft Marshmallow Man? <laughs> 
I don't understand politicians who are against gay marriage. I don't understand anyone who's against gay marriage. I and mean, when you really think about it, aren't all marriages kind of gay? I mean, <laughs> as a man, when you get married, essentially what you're saying is, I will never touch another woman as long as I live. Now let's put jewelry on each other and dance. <laughs> Not that it's any of my business, Mr. Gingrich, but why are you waiting until Tuesday to drop out of this? Just do it now. It's, oh, it's time to mid or get off the pot. <laughs> the election process has changed a lot over the last 10 years. As you know, the president finally gave in and agreed to a super PAC, which initially Vice President Biden was very excited about until he found out that a super PAC isn't one of those big boxes with all the different kinds of chips. <laughs> and while we're on the subject of super PACs, let's get rid of super committees. Super committees are to committees what super cuts is to cuts. <laughs> All right, it's time for the fun part of the evening. I'd like everyone to look under your seats. Um, under each one, you will find a copy of Keith Olbermann's resume. <laughs> is Keith here tonight? Limo wouldn't pick him up? The thing about Keith Olbermann is he's so likable. Al Gore launched Current TV in 2005 and it took off like a North Korean rocket. <laughs> to be honest, I didn't even know Current TV was still on the air, but then I don't get channel a million. <laughs> Keith Oberman burned more bridges than the arsonist of Madison County. He has more pink slips than Marcus Bachman. <coughs> Too soon? Too soon? If you're not familiar with Marcus Bogman, he plays Cameron on the show Modern Family. Stand up and take, where are you, Marcus? Oh, there he is. I do have one real question for you, Mr. President. What's with the marijuana crackdown? I mean, seriously, what is the concern? We will deplete the nation's Funyun supply? You know, pot smokers vote too, sometimes a week after the election, but they vote. <laughs> Let's take a quick poll. I would like everyone in this room to raise your, raise your hand if you've never smoked pot. <laughs> there you go. Look at Britt Hume, he's high right now. <laughs> he's on his fourth almond macaroon. <laughs> Mr. President, I hope you don't think I'm out of line here, but marijuana is something that real people care about and the fact that you believe Speaker Boehner when he tells you he still has control of his party leads me to believe that you must be smoking some crazy great weed yourself. <laughs> Woody Harrelson just woke up. <laughs> As we know now, last year at this dinner, President Obama had his team on the way to kill Osama bin Laden. So who will it be this year? <laughs> if you're looking for the biggest threat to America right now, she's right there. Her name is Kim Kardashian. She was captured by Greta Van Susteren and brought right to your doorstep. You know, when you took office, the Kardashians had one reality show. Now they have four. This is not a good trend. Right now, Navy, Navy SEAL Team 6 is outside the Kardashian compound in Beverly Hills, disguised as the Denver Nuggets, so they can sneak in undetected. I have a question. Who are these people who think it would be a good idea to attack Iran? I hear people say, Bomb them, nuke them, just do it now. But they're a real bunch of yahoos and Netanyahu's. <laughs> There's only one way to have peace between the Israelis and the Arabs. Instead of focusing on their differences, they should focus on what they have in common, which is a mutual love of falafel and terrible dance music. <laughs> I don't understand all the anger that is directed at the president. Even if you disagree with his politics, he's funny, he's athletic, he has a beautiful singing voice, he's devoted to his family. Even with all his responsibilities, he still finds time to go to his kids' soccer games and move the goalposts. And I think that's commendable. <laughs> President Obama wants everyone in America to have health care, whether we want it or not. I think I figured it out. You're not from Kenya. It's even worse. You're from Canada. <laughs> this health care reform thing has a lot of people very angry. There seems to be a lot of anger in general. And ladies and gentlemen, if I can get serious for a moment. I, I believe that if we truly want to overcome the problems that we face, we have to do it together. We cannot forget this country is a great country. This is a land of liberty and justice for all. And it doesn't matter if you're black like President Obama or white like President Obama <laughs> or red like President Obama's agenda or orange like Speaker Boehner. America is 
and will always be, as a great man once put it, a place where a man is judged not by the color of his skin, but rather by the number of his Twitter followers. <laughs> it has been uh, an honor for me to be here before so many members of the Washington and national media. You're here tonight because as journalists, you care about freedom, free speech, a free press, and most importantly, free dinner. <laughs> Some people say journalism is in decline. They say you've become too politicized too focused on sensationalism. They say you no longer honor your duty to inform America, but instead actively try to divide us so that your corporate overlords can rake in the profits. I don't have a joke for this. I'm just letting you know what some people say. <laughs> in conclusion, I, it really has been an honor for me to be here tonight, and I'd like to thank Karen Bohan for inviting me, and Jake Tapper for um, writing all the jokes you didn't like, and. Uh, <laughs> I also want to thank Mr. Mills, my 10th grade high school history teacher, who said I'd never amount to anything if I kept screwing around in class. Mr. Mills, I'm about to high five the President of the United States. Is it okay? Eat it, Mills. Thank you, everybody.